get around that late okay. to talk about it. Um, I think that well, if we're going to make a statement or something like that, it should be in a positive way because like, I've gotten along with Mark. I actually liked hanging out with him. As much as I hated like trying to talk about issues or anything with him, I, I like you said, I don't think he's evil. I think he has good intentions. Um, but put this as a statement, like you need to like, in the in the anarchist where it's, you know you need to check your privilege. Yeah. You need to like look at like just he needs to check his privilege. I I don't want to say get help, but like just yeah. sit back and think <laughs> about how your actions. Have to leave because we have animals that okay. Take care of. Um, my only question is, are you when you one of your tenants would be um, the power piece, um, right? Of your three parts to your proposal, one of them was about power, him having do you, power. Do you mean um, the access to the funds and resources or voting? Resources. For, okay. So that one, does that include admin on the page? Yes. And if we're not here for the vote, we support, I support it. Thank you. Mr. Will can speak for Okay, so we'll call, that'll be at the end of the agenda. Thank you. Okay. So, all right. That is does everybody feel has everybody had a chance to introduce themselves we have somebody new I don't know if he wants to introduce himself all right so uh, we'll go on to the next part of the agenda at this point which is okay. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. um introductions down uh, so the first statement uh, is ONH is an inclusive group. We do not discriminate on the basis of race, sex, religion, political affiliation. All are welcome. So we'll go around. Everyone will have an opportunity to say something if they want to amend it. And then we, yes. This, the, this is like a statement we're going to broadcast or what's the purpose of it? Yes, I think the, the it was suggested the purpose of it is a, just a statement of purpose. Solidarity. Solidarity. I don't know what uh, exactly to call it. Yes. I think that particular proposal is premature. Okay. I'll tell you why. I don't think anybody in this group would want the Koch brothers to come in and join us. Can you speak louder? I don't think anybody in the group would want the people responsible for the problem and the, the easy symbol is the Koch brothers to sit down in here and claim to be on the same page with us and want to be part of it. They would want to buy us off. You have to decide what is our focus and people who are comfortable with that focus are welcome and people who oppose the focus are not welcome. Make it broad, make it the core of what we all came here for. S sign on to what that is. And then anybody who's comfortable with it and wants to fight for it is perfectly welcome to join in. I'm not, there is, unless you, when you stand for something, you have to be opposed to people against that core value. Mark, Mark. 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 Yeah. We'll let Mark go and then we'll start here and, and, go, and, go, and go around so that everyone gets a chance to, uh, to speak on this. Just as a direct response to that, I would consider the Koch brothers to be part of the 1%. Even Me saying too. that, I would not want to exclude the 1% from sitting down and talking about the issues with us in, in an open-minded manner because they need to be educated as well. To me, this Occupy movement has been about education for both myself and to try and reach across bridges and, and educate everyone about the issues. And I don't want to exclude anyone from talking about the situation. That's what got us here in the first place. My parents, um, tons of people, myself until Occupy came out, were ignorant of the true problem and what was really going on in places like this. And until we wake everyone up and get everyone involved, the more people that we have involved, the better off we'll be because everyone will understand what's going on and they'll say, wait a minute, we can't do that. So that's why I myself do not want to exclude anyone from the conversation. Go ahead. Um, so with regards to the statement, um, I think that actually we should maybe combine this statement with the statement that Matt was talking about and not make the statement that we issue about Mark Provost, but about the fact that we are a tolerant, ex inclusive community of people and people who are going to be 
trying to assert power or authority over people based on their perspectives are not welcome. Or something that just says, we are all autonomous individuals, we come here collectively but with our own ways of thinking, and that's to be respected. Um, and so, point of process? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant three response. Oh, oh okay. I can't say great. Um, at a, um, what will the statements issued by this group um, will be from, you know, will, will carry what authority and will be from what group? I mean, is this, is this an Occupy New Hampshire General Assembly? And as such, does it, it, does it carry it the... It's a statewide GA. This is a statewide GA. Okay. Yeah. Unless there's a cease and desist order out there we're not aware of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even then, we're still Occupy. If you're here, you're Occupy. I mean, that's yeah. Reality. Okay. So, it, it, I mean, this statement would have uh, would would be you know for from New, Occupy New Hampshire. Yes. Yes. So Matthew. Uh, uh, thank you for your response. Director Fun. Um, what we said. I think we should sign a statement um, in regards to bullying in conjunction, like explaining our reason for why we would exclude Mark. From yeah. No, I think. I think that's. Maybe, but I do think that there, I think that a statement of inclusivity is a good idea. I just also think that so is a statement of non-abuse, like yeah. non-aggression or whatever. Are okay. we going to go around on yeah, this? Yeah, we're going yes. around. Yeah. Do you, ben, or? Um, I'll, I'll start. I mean, I, I agree with it. I, I agree that we should be saying that this is an inclusive. I, I honestly, I mean, we invited Mitt Romney once down to yeah. speak at the GA. He chose not to come. <laughs> <laughs> But I think everyone is welcome to the discussion. I think we still need to have a conversation about exactly why we are here, what we see the core problems of the world. I think we all have similar ideas about what the problems are, but I think the main reason to be inclusive is because we need as many perspectives on the problems as we can, as we can get. Because I don't know all the problems that are out there. I have an idea, but I, need to li I want to listen to other people. And that's all other people, so I support it. I'd, I'd like to propose an alternative wording. This is not the type of group that if you say race or sex, then you say, oh, but that doesn't include sexual preference. Oh, well, okay, we'll add that. And then, like the state of New Hampshire does, they keep adding little, little inclusions. And so the alternative proposal that I would say is instead of saying we'll include every, all the 99%, is Occupy New Hampshire will not exclude anyone for any reason. Uh, I, I do, I, I would like the amendment that we, we um, should be able to hold abusers accountable. Unless we choose to abandon, unless we choose to yeah. abandon an individual. No, absolutely not. Why not? I'm going to comment on that too. That's a separate issue. Well, I mean, I uh, think it, uh, if we say we, we it will not exclude going. anyone for any reason. That that leaves like you know, if somebody comes in and punches someone in the face, yeah. then we can't ask them not to come back. Um, exactly. you know, so I so I do think we need to have that long list, you know, race, creed, gender, gender, political orientation, sexual orientation, and we need to we need to be specific um, because otherwise you can have threatening and abusive people who are, you know, who are people who are committing criminal acts that, that that we're not comfortable with as a group that we that we don't have any recourse to exclude those people. So I'd like to I'd like to take the two things and merge them together because I because I think we don't have us? to. Yeah, we're we, going. We yeah. Go I, I, sorry, I, got, I thought I got recognized. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Uh, this direct response thing. If That's we can right. keep that to a very much yeah. minimum, oh, uh, yeah. maybe make a note of what you want to respond I'll, to. I'll keep it very short. I just want to. I just want to. The reason I want to say is because I think this is a perfect example where I think you're saying the same thing and we can bring it together. We don't have to have a laundry list. Because what I heard you say was we should have a laundry list and then we should say anybody who doesn't respect that laundry list. I think we just need to say people who respect other people. If you don't respect other people, we're going to have a problem. That's the problem with Mark is he's not respecting other people. It doesn't have to be a laundry list. We just have to say respecting other people. It, that is the key here. Okay. I, I agree with that. Let's go around. Continue on in this vein. I guess the only the only thing to add is we're not necessarily trying to exclude um, an individual or you know a, a group. We're but we're excluding a specific set of set of behaviors that is unacceptable. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Uh, 
Alva? I think that anything that undermines the trust of each other inside the, um, inside or outside the community uh, sh should be held accountable. It should be included in the accountability. <coughs> Thank you. I personally agree. I think that we definitely need uh, we definitely need a statement of solidarity. Um, expressly saying that we invite everybody um, into this. However, if you think that you have come in to use some kind of power or aggression, it won't be tolerated. The Tea Party and the Occupy did actually get together in Washington, D.C. and actually accomplish some stuff. So we can work together with those that we do disagree with. It's, it's just a matter of finding what we all agree with together and just stay on that and if we can just stay on that plateau then we should actually be able to accomplish like great things. It's my not saying that Occupy and people are just disagree with each They do disagree quite a bit. Can you read it come together and watch things see and got stuff done again? though. It is an actual yes. account. I just asked him to read it again. <clears throat> Currently what it says is ONH is an inclusive group. We do not discriminate on the basis of race, sex, religion, or political affiliation. And I, I, I think that that's that people are making a distinction between people's personal behavior, right. and they're they're conflating that. When you're broadly excluding a group of people, is much different than someone based on their proven personal behavior. Um. I think my feeling on that is, is uh, the way it's worded is fine. I think that it needs to be kept extremely simple. And I think that people in general will ostracize themselves. It happens all the time in society. So that's it. Mark? You know, I'm in agreement with a lot of the, I'm here to stand against tyranny and oppression in any form, uh, whether it be our government, whether it be people trying to oppress other peoples and what, what they have to say. And I, I will say one thing on the, I'm, I'm sorry, Ian. one thing on the, on the gun issue, I'm, I was trained in, 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 in the use of weapons by our government, Mark, by my father. We're and, not on that statement right now. Okay, well, uh, you know, there's people excluding people. I mean, I think I'd like to get get to know other people. I'd like to have a teach-in on it, maybe. Um, I really feel uncomfortable it's already and exposed. On the agenda, I think, I'll, I'll hold it. Agenda. I feel uncomfortable and exposed right now with my pair of pink socks to protect me. <laughs> Just saying. We've got your back. That's it. I'm really glad <laughs> you have your pink socks to protect me. <laughs> I got my super socks. Heather? Super socks. Heather. 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 Um, hi. 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 I'm Heather. I'm just really glad we're all here today. It's nice to see everybody coming together. And um, I'm expecting big things. Okay, I think we need, we need to, to uh, really hustle this. I, and I want to, obviously we want to hear everyone's voice, but right, the discussion is on the, particularly the, um, Inclusivity statement. The inclusivity statement. statement. So anyone who has anything to contribute to the inclusivity statement. Okay. Well, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to pick very much. back up. Chaz. Sorry, picking right back up. And. <laughs> I think it's really important to make a huge distinction between, in a prejudicial manner, excluding an entire group, and the idea of holding an individual accountable for their actions. These are apples and oranges. They're completely separate and different subjects. Right. As far as this gentleman over here who expressed a concern about being able to say, wait, this is what I stand for, so I get to say I don't stand for them. Here's, here's what I'd like to address with that, is that we need to at least bring the discourse to the table and be discussing this. One of the things that I see a lot of going on is a lot of talking back past one another and not really hearing 
what the other person's intent is behind our words. We, we use these buzzwords like socialist or, I mean, I see people on my liberal side conflate completely Republican, Tea Party, the co-opted Tea Party, capital L Libertarian, small L Libertarian, and Free Staters. And they are all different, okay? <laughs> and, and it took me a while to wake up to this reality, okay? But I finally did. Now, one of the things that finally became this big aha point for me was the fact that when they're saying these things about business, they're meaning it about someone like me, a sole proprietorship. I do massage therapy. I make t-shirts. I do stained glass. I make jam. I'm, I'm, I'm just this little person who is creative and busy, okay? We liberals, we hear them apply it, as you brought up, to the Koch brothers. What we don't hear in their ideology is long before they've made those statements, they've already got something securely in place called the removal of sovereign immunity. This piece is huge because with that piece, if you get rid of sovereign immunity, the Cokes would have been broke a long time ago. Bottom line. But how does that relate to, do you have any thoughts because on the statement? Because he, he needs to not be afraid of the discourse and start listening better and hearing well, where these people are really coming from. Okay, but did you have, I mean, I, I Oh, it's, it, it's important to set up a set of guidelines, very keep it simple, silly, to, to bring people accountable for actions, but not keep out whole groups because because if you fear their voice, yeah, because there's important things they bring to the table with their voice, and I was trying to give that as an example. Okay. Um, we're going around, is it? Okay. We'll also circle outside. Do you have anything they them. would like to add to the inclusivity statement or about it? I, you know, I personally would love Barack Obama, uh, Ron Paul, uh, you know, Romney, the Koch brothers, George Soros, I'd love them all to come and sit here and be individuals and talk to us and, and you know, give us their view on things. I, you know, I think that would be intensely interesting and add to the thing. They may be part of the 1%, all of them, but, you know, we can, we can, we can give them a path out of them, can't we? Can't we do that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And, and uh, by the way, I'm Abel Freeman. I don't think I said that in my introduction. I just want to add that in. And, and so I, I, you know, I agree in inclusivity. I think, that, you know, there's also the, the, the issue of, you know, if you are going to be abusive, uh, we don't need that here. So please stay away. Thank you very much. I do have a devil's advocate sort of question. Because we're talking about keeping the provost honest and others who tend to indulge in, I guess, what we're calling abusive behaviors and keeping abusers accountable, how do we define abuse versus what's acceptable? So, based on the rules that are being discussed today, how is bringing a gun to an event not an abuse of or not an affront to some people. Um, as the facilitator, I'm going to step in. That is something, I think that there's two things that we need to address that you've asked. One is how we define abuse. The other is the issue of guns. And the guns is a separate, that's the next conversation. And that should be part of that conversation. Um, My problem is I'm seeing way more parallels than I'm comfortable with right now. And I just want to make sure these issues are addressed before something and I think it's you have. That's good that you're you're being honest and bringing it out because you're. I think that there might be something to what you're saying, but it's just. Um, but I do think that the the defining abuse is something that we should probably talk about if we're gonna what what designates abuse. How do you define that? It's important. And then the other thing would just be part of the next. Uh, before I yield much more, I guess I just want to say. Having studied political science, like, I understand that what I just asked is an age-old question that <laughs> <laughs> no one ever really comes to a conclusive answer, just I want to make sure it is being thought of. 
Seth. Um, so, William, can you read? Can you read it? Because I'm going to make an amendment, and I'd like to have the wording. So, ONH is an inclusive group. We do not discriminate on the basis of race, sex, religion, or political affiliation. Okay, I'd like to add to the end of that, or any other distinction among people. Yes. That way we are That's completely good. inclusive okay. and nobody can say, well, but this isn't covered. Yeah. Let's That's just go good. ahead and be really clear. It doesn't matter whether it says, well, this is only open to the left because it doesn't say that it that Republicans or, or politics or any. We want to go ahead and take it. Right, but, but my point is, is we go ahead and we just say, it doesn't matter what if somebody comes up with. So if you want to wear pink socks, we're not going to have an anti-pink socks rule. <laughs> to go ahead and say, just say no distinctions, and that way we make it clear. Doesn't matter what somebody wants to draw as a distinction in the future. We're already saying you're welcome. You're welcome whether you're part of the one percent and you want to have a conversation. You're welcome whether you're an elected official. You're welcome for any reason whatsoever to show up and be part of the process. So just add very simple or any other distinction among people. I'm just gonna rephrase any any uh, personal ideology. Um, so for your wording, William, um, I, I hear a concern from Chris that uh, that the movement could be, if we don't have precautions, the movement could be taken over from big outside money. And I hear from Matthew the concern of the group being taken over from the inside <laughs> by just a powerful personality or whatever. So if you were to add a wording that said, all who respect these guidelines are invited, and if you have to, to say, oh, don't, or those who don't. But I think you could just say, state the positive. That allows you to have a vote on respect, Seth's word. Uh, and you could say, you know, point of respect. Or okay, as a, as, a, as a moderator, I'm just going to put this out there, and, and hopefully Teresa knows how to handle this, because this um, uh, facilitator, I should say, is, is the first time I've ever tried to help and I don't know how to go about this. I, I understand, you know, with Robert's Rules of Order, every time someone makes an amendment, we have to go around and discuss that amendment. Right. Yeah, yeah, we do. Because w once I change it, people who agreed to it may not now agree to it. So every time there's a new amendment, it seems to me that we now have to have a completely new discussion about the amendment. If I'm not mistaken, and, and please, someone else help. Because I don't know what to do here, because now we have four amendments that it seems to me we're going to have to go up around four more times and by that time we're going to have another four amendments. I don't understand how, how to, what to go on it's here. It's a point of process. If somebody has a problem with it then they should block while it's happening so that it would make it faster maybe? Well, the, There is a proposal process. We did. I, I don't know if we'd want to use the same process that ben, we use with the help. initial solidarity <laughs> statement. Um, and blocks are pretty extreme. You should pretty pretty much reserve blocks unless yeah, what's going to happen. Gonna make you leave. Otherwise just do you know, spit um, hands. Okay. When we did the statement of solidarity and with proposals on Dewey Square, there was a process that we went through. And that process provided the ability to, for example, and this has not been that process so, so far, um, but Matt would read his proposal and then we'd go and we'd hear points of information, clarifying questions, concern, statements of support, statements of concern, friendly amendments. At that point, Matt would go through and decide if he wanted to make any of those amend, like uh, uh, include those amendments with his original proposal, and then re read it to the General Assembly. And we would go through, and at that point, we would go through again, and then we would go, f we would say, we would ask for blocks. If anyone blocked, we would go through the block process. Otherwise, we would go through and see if there was consensus for the statement. Um, so we could sort of do that with once everybody's given their amendments to go through the amendments in a more, uh, I guess, efficient way. Though efficiency isn't always the goal in consensus. Can I make, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I mean, it was kind of brought up by Ben. And I, I mean, I think that with the number of people we have here, we're trying to get everybody's input. All of these are friendly amendments. All of these are meant to clarify. And so if anybody who's spoken before has an issue with what's been proposed, if they feel that it's changed their viewpoint, that, you know, for, to go ahead and, and, and raise, a, raise a point, ask a question. But, you know, unless somebody goes ahead and feels like, yeah, that's completely changed my mind, now I'm against it, or I was for it, and I was against it, and now I'm for it, and they want to change their view, we, 
unless unless they've changed their position for some reason, then they don't necessarily, we don't need to keep going around. Yeah. We just need to hear the people who have shifted. And so that becomes very quick to say, has anybody shifted their viewpoint? Here's what, here's where we're at now. We have this proposed. Here's our language. Has anybody changed their mind and now wants to give additional new input? And that way it won't be continuously going around. You sort of say, okay, well, everybody's given input. And is there anything different? Okay, let's continue around this way with statement of inclusivity. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, emphasize the distinction that a few people have made. Um, I think we should really emphasize in, in, in the inclusivity statement that we're, if we are ever exclusive, it's on the basis of behavior, not on the basis, and I know this has been yes. said before, but I want to emphasize that because I feel it's really important that we're excluding, if we ever do exclude, on the basis of behavior, on the behavior, on the on the basis of especially what's Matt, what Matt has been talking about, which also concerns me, is abusive behavior, making this feel like an unsafe space that people cannot have a dialogue in and cannot um, successfully come together, whether you're whoever. Aside from that, I don't think there is really much of a call for exclusivity outside of using uh, power or privilege over other people. Uh, that's my feelings. I can abbreviate this as much as possible. Um, I half agree and half totally disagree with Seth. Um, I think there are, as usual, usual, as usual. Um, <laughs> I think there are three main concerns about it. There's a laundry list. Do we have a laundry list? Don't we? Who should be in it? Who shouldn't be in it? What should we exclude from the laundry list? Um, what focus? Uh, I mean, does it have enough focus or not enough focus? <coughs> allowing in the Koch brothers and uh, behavior and yes, we do need to exclude based on behavior. So I just have a wording. Um, ONH is an inclusive organization. We do not discriminate on political affiliation. I don't think there's a big question out there, is ONH a racist or a sexist <laughs> group? Do they discriminate on that? The only question really is political. And I don't want to say political ideas, but political affiliation, it's important to say, we do not discriminate on political affiliation. And everyone who has concerns about economic inequality and is willing to and able to participate in, a, in an egalitarian democratic process is welcome. I think that covers it. I don't think it leaves anything out. I actually have the words, so you don't have to write all that down. Thank you. Starting, you're starting to do some fast speed. Close enough. He was starting to put in what the core values are. I like it. I came to listen to what all of these different players would agree on. I think time is running out until they, the group has to come to stand. What, what will it fight for? What are we going to be active? I'd love to see something all of these talented, passionate people would fight for if it's anything like what I want. Let's get it on. Sorry, we have a back in the circle. I don't agree, agree with you. There's a lot of debate on what we're going to call ourselves. There's a lot of debate on how to create bylaws. We're creating our own quagmire, which bogs us down when we should be discussing how we're going to deal with what's going on right now out here in this outside world that we have to deal with. And this is where we need to move on and, mm -hmm. and really investigate those those things that we got to go for and go for it. Because like there's there's so many issues out there. You know, we all have different talents. We all have different knowledge of different things to go on. And if we just put those knowledges together and get out of this quagmire of what are we gonna call ourselves, what are we gonna do for bylaws and and this sort of stuff, you know, because we're just tying ourselves down and not progressing on. Can I make a direct response? Um, I was not here for the, the, this thing that happened. Seth, you've been talking about it. Yeah. Um, give yeah. a little bit of background. If you could really sure. just kind of explain what that is, because sure. I think that that goes a long yeah, way in starting this. I, I was this. thinking the same thing, so thank you. Um, so one of the things <coughs> that happened at the occupation of Manchester, and this came, it evolved because we had 
a website, we had a forum, we were directing people there, and we had done some trying to get well, what are people caring about. So we started off with some, some, some polls on the forum. From the, the responses there, we a, a number of people distilled down those concerns into nine items. And those nine items were all written onto big sheets of, of uh, paper, and they were brought to the Occupy in Manchester, and there were 60, 70 at least people there. It was a good good sized crowd. At, at least at yeah. least that many. Um, and um, Green stickers and red stickers were handed out. And the goal of this was to say, okay, you can't be for everything and against everything. You've got to have some selection here. So here's three yeses. I support these concepts. And here's three blocks, essentially. There's nine concepts based at distilling down a lot of the suggestions that were made. What do people want to support? And we found three items that had universal support and nobody was blocking. And those three items we felt were a good basis to start with, and the problem was it got it got interrupted because the cops said you can't be here anymore. So that that whole process got stifled, and we really would love to pick that back up. Those those three things were very simple. One said total transparency of government at all levels. Nobody's blocking. Nobody nobody wants secrecy. Great. <laughs> Number two. Political donations should be done from individuals. Why? Because it's individuals that should have the voice. Corporations are not individuals. Right. And, and related to that, the, the, the core idea of in corporate personhood, and whatever that specific would be, because there's, I've, I've talked to lawyers who say, you don't know what you're talking about. What we're talking about here is corporations are not people. People are people, and using a corporation to shield is part of the problem, that you know people are not being held accountable. So do something with that. Those three concepts, we had universal agreement. Is anybody here blocking? So, in corporate personhood was the third one. So, all all political donations should be from individuals and in corporate personhood. And those are related, but but as a concept, we all agreed we can hash over the details. The fourth one that we had a very small number of blocks on, and we really wish we had had the discussion because we wanted to know who blocked it, was in the wars. So we had a sea of green that people said, yes, this is one of my most important things. If I only get three votes, that's one of them. And we had two or three people who put a red sticker. And we wanted to know who put the red sticker and what was their reason. So we didn't have complete agreement, but we knew we were close. We wanted to continue that. Those were the issues. And one of the problems was we had, we had one that said universal jobs guarantee. And I'll tell you right now, the person I distinctly remember who was furious that it didn't have this universal support, that it had a sea of red, was Mark Provost. And, and I'm sitting there going, Mark, there's no support for this. And yet, if you went to talk to him, this is what Occupy is about. And it wasn't being validated. And that was part of the problem with some of the people who decided that they speak for Occupy, was when we did a temperature check on these things, they weren't getting the support they wanted and they weren't happy with that. And so finally, you know, what they did was they said, well, we're the real Occupy, the rest of you aren't. Well, that's why we're here today. So I think, yes, we absolutely do have things we agree on. I would love to have that be a statement. I don't think we're ready for that today. I think we need to go back, revisit that process, refine it and say, here's all the things that we all care about. What do we all agree on? But I'm not sure that we don't have the time for that today. Right. Um, does, does anyone else here have anything to add on the statement of inclusivity? So are we going to use Tim's amendment? Is that where well, we're at? If, if it's back around to me, then I have something to say. Well, a few things. One of them Wait, could is I, on. Yes. I, I was uh, assuming that I put in economic inequality in there, figuring that would be fine with everyone. If not, you could actually just take that out and do it still work without it. Okay. Um, well, that that was one point that economic inequality is, is just a, too, it's a very broad term for people to agree on. What it boils down to is it's a broad enough term that people can start to begin to pick it apart and argue about what is and is not and who is and who is not actually for economic inequality or, or equality. I'm sorry. The, the second part here that um, will willingly participate um, in the egalitarian democratic process, that was part of the second statement um, that that we were going to come to, which was ONH is committed to the consensus process. But that's an ONH, it's not the people, it's everyone here has to be willing and able to participate. 
I get your distinction. I get the distinction that you're making, but if we're com if we're committed to the process, then necessarily if they're if not, then I'm not committed to the process. I said I'm a, I can't work in that process. Then I can still be here if you allow me. But I really don't want to be there. Okay. So, so I think it's important that individuals, members, have to be willing and able to participate in it. In addition to the community being committed to it. And it, it's just my my concern. And, and I, it, it's just that at, at, at any point, there's, there's uh, I don't want to have to do, be, because of the fact that I really want to be talking about the productive things that we want to move on together, I don't want to ever have to come back and have people debate, like, Whether well, it was well you know, this, that guy right there, he is not for economic equality. We need to exclude him based on our statement. I don't want to have that conversation ever. I really, really don't. That's just me personally. I don't know about everyone else, but um, it seems like that maybe the distinction and maybe it can be distilled down to that uh, no one would be excluded except for their for their personal behavior. Could it be that simple? Yeah. Could be. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I almost if they feel like show it up be. and they are disruptive or abusive or anything that threatens the process, then we can, but then that's based on their personal behavior. So if maybe we could simply say that ONH is an, an inclusive organization and no one will be excluded except based on their own personal behavior. Just really quick direct response, is that okay? Um, okay. I, I would say we don't have to make it ex yeah. explicit on the statement itself, but I just my fear is that some people might jump at certain people's actions and don't wait for consensus or anything like that, and instead take take it as their own initiative to um, to uh, exclude somebody or, or or call them out on their bullying instead of searching for consensus on the matter. I'm not sure if you have to have it to exclude somebody from, but I would I would think you would. I, I hope what I'm saying is clear. That, that goes right to the behavioral part of it, though. I mean, as soon as somebody says, oh, that person's attacking me, I'm going to immediately do this to them. That right there says that their behavior, the person that's taking the action against somebody, that right there goes goes to the behavioral. Yeah. You know, and then, and then those two people, if they have a problem, should actually probably try to either work it out themselves, and if they can't, then the group needs to decide. Okay, so... Who, you know, whose, so behavior, then, whose behavior was... You know, well, so then no one power. will be excluded except for their personal behavior and by consensus? Yeah. By consensus is definitely, yeah. Over here, a couple of them, I, I think. think so. What do I say on the wording? We have it as exclusive behavior. What? That would be termed as anyone who carries a gun or anyone who wears a mask as an exclusive behavior is upsetting someone. I don't, I don't think we have that language. Uh, let me let me read it again. It says no one will be excluded except for their personal behavior and by consensus. I think that's where we're at. But we're getting through the process of consensus. I'm sure. Yeah, you should probably put through the process of consensus. Um, and I do think that there's one other thing that, just as a reminder, just because Occupy New Hampshire doesn't exclude people you still have a right like if we didn't as a group shun or ostracize or whatever you want to call it mark provost i would still personally do that because that I, he is accountable to me for his actions and i am accountable for the way that i respond to his actions and that is outside of a statement of solidarity um, we all act as individuals and the consensus process is only when somebody's abuse has gotten to the point where it's so detrimental and yeah and latent that something has to be said or done but we are all accountable every day for our behavior and occupying the words that come out of our mouth and the actions we choose to partake in um, so this on this so here's where we are with regard to the statement of solidarity that we have thus far no one will be excluded except for their person okay so I guess the beginning occupy new there's except on the basis of their personal behavior. It says no one will be excluded except for their personal
personal behavior and through the consensus process. I think you're missing right. um, Occupy New Hampshire. Occupy New Hampshire is, an inclusive is a, group. that's what I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. 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 Occupy New Hampshire is an inclusive group. Okay, so Occupy New Hampshire is committed to inclusivity and no one will be excluded except for um, through because of their personal behavior and through the consensus process. It's an abusive behavior. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. We need yeah. to define yeah. abusive behavior or exclusive, be, uh, you know, I trying to exclude. I don't know. We need to define that a little bit. I, th I think violent behavior. I think, I think consensus process actually covers that because then right. whenever we see it, we can come together and decide as a community what to do with yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, that's what so, I was saying earlier. Two people have a problem. If they can't work it out between them, then the group needs to get together and decide, yeah. look, this, this person's actually being blatant and disrespectful, and we can see that this is the problem. And when you get a whole bunch of people that agree, it says there's a consensus. What, what, what number of people do we need to form a consensus? We, in the original Occupy, we said 100 people was required to have a GA. I mean, we were, I guess we were, we were thinking positively at that point, but I've only been in a few GAs where there was 100 people there. Point of process, I think, yeah. um, I think discussing a quorum limit is another issue entirely that we can talk yeah. about later. Okay. okay. So the, the statement as it reads at this point is, Occupy New Hampshire is an inclusive group. No one will be excluded except on the basis of their personal behavior and through the process of consensus. That is the statement that we're working with right now. Um, and so if, is there any blocks to this proposal or any, I missed, I missed your reading it. Okay. Occupy New Hampshire is an inclusive group. No, no one will be excluded except on the basis of their own personal behavior and through the consensus process. Can I add? Um, okay, so for if you have friendly amendments, we'll go through and get friendly amendments. Um, I'll, and we'll start with Cecilia because her hand was up first. Uh, I wanted to uh, add that uh, those personal behaviors will be uh, like treated or, or uh, be subjected to a consensus process. Yeah. That's in there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what we've been putting that. Okay. And other <laughs> amendments? Uh, any other We're friendly amendments? Uh, well, we had a, I think we had someone at least doing this. Yeah. Jack, did you have any? You would, you I, like I, had, I didn't like personal behavior. I thought it would be better to say abusive behavior. Or How about exclusionary behavior? Uh, no, that's, what I'm that, that's all personal behavior. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think and, and personal behavior is enough of an umbrella term that we can come to consensus. Okay. I think it's personal so behavior. Personal behavior. Personal behavior. Personal behavior. I think. Then, then you could say that a mask is. Yeah, I, I hate to be promoting what I said before, but what you, the only thing you care about is stuff that disrupts the process, like this kind of that kind of behavior, which is the inability to participate in an egalitarian, smallly democratic process. So, I kind of captured those words, not just because I came up with them, but because I think they actually apply better. And behavior is so subjective. Negative behavior is so subjective. And disruption to the process is much more protective. Uh, I would just say, but but it's not just disruption to the process. It's all I mean, because some I, I would personally I could even make the argument that abusive that is even being abusive to somebody is not even gonna affect the process. Exactly. That, that it's not yeah. I it'll mean, keep people from right, I mean I can swear on somebody else when it's not gonna stop the process. It's just well, if you're the one in the group. People in general agree with you, which I think probably more than most of the time, then that would be fine. But. Well, I, I think the fact that it has to go through the consensus process generally will mean that enough people will have a voice on the issue. Also, would be the arguments on, I think the guy with the mask is not being disruptive at all, but we have an argument, and there's no question right now that he's not interfering with the process. But we could have all sorts of debate about whether it's something that you're Well, we could. I, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think that would be bad to have that discussion if we wanted to. I mean, it's all on a per group basis. It's so much easier when we're actually in an encampment and we have time to discuss all these issues, too. Yeah. yeah. That was what was nice about the encampment. Yeah, it wasn't like you felt like you were trying to get all of this into a short period of time. Um, Okay, so what I would say is this. 
um, we can talk about the wording, but the reality is that anything we come to consensus on today is the consensus we came to today. It's all subject to amendment, it's all subject to change because what we're going to evolve and we're going to want to change things as, as we need to. So if there is a word or two in here that you don't agree with or that we can't come to a, um, an awesome place with, I don't know how else to say it, we, we can amend it. Um, I do, so I'll read it again. I, I do support that it should, that, that there should, there should, the word abusive should be there somewhere because it really calls out exactly what it is that we're trying to, to tackle head on here. Um, and that's really what we're trying to keep out of Occupy New Hampshire is this, this abusive mentality. But if you, but I will always follow whatever the consensus is. Um, and so as it sits now, have, there's, is there any other, there was no amendment to 